Thank you for joining me on this episode of JJG and the Face. It's me, your favorite JJG, Jacob James Garcia. I'm pumped. I'm pumped. Right now, we have some guests that are coming up who are the face of music. They're a musical duo that go by the name of Annie and Kate. Are they sisters? Yup. Are they twins? Double yup. Do they come from a fantastic family? 100%. I can't wait for you to get to know them. But before we do that, I'd like to thank my sponsors. My sponsor this week is a fitness queen based out of the ATX. She knows what she's doing. She knows how to steer you right to get them muscles going, to get your health all fixed up. She goes by the name of Maria Gazin. She is 100% the truth. She's not going to be like, all you can do is eat kale and eat water. I can't eat water, yo. I need food. And she's aware of that. She takes you on a fitness journey that will get you where you need to go. So if you want to look her up, you look her up at MariaGazinFitness.com. Our second sponsors are the one, the only, the Wizard Hat Smoke Shop. I love these guys. With a location up north on Palmer and one south on Manchac, they bookend the greatest city on earth, Austin, Texas. They have everything you need to take care of your glass needs. If your joints are giving you problems, they got that CBD. If you're trying to fix what ails you, they got that Kratom, they got apparel. And on a personal note, they also sponsor Jacob James Garcia's comedy tours. How do you think I was able to get to Canada? They helped me do that. So thank you to the Wizard Hat Smoke Shop. Go check them out. And without further ado, let's get to know the one, the two, the only two, Annie and Kate. What's up, everybody? Welcome to this week's episode of JJG in the Face. I'm your favorite JJG, Jacob James Garcia. And this week's face is the face of music. They're a wonderful musical duo that go by the name of Annie and Kate. And here they are. Hi. Hi. I'm so glad you guys are with me this week. I actually kind of feel like a little bit of a fanboy. Oh, thank you. I saw that you guys were in town on Instagram, and I was like, okay, I'm going to track them down. Whoever handles their social media needs to meet me. That's mom. That's mom. That's, mom. that's, mom. that's your handler? Yes. So like, yes. I only want she's green M&Ms. She's our, our people. <laughs> hey, well, your people talk to my people, yeah, which exactly. is also me. I'm my people. And, uh... I'm really glad that you guys are doing so well. I see you all left town for a little bit. Yeah. And I want the people to get to know you because I've already gotten to know you guys a bit. But you two are musicians and you're sisters. Yes. And you're twins. Yeah. <laughs> is there something special? Like, I know my favorite band right now that's a, a more of a mainstream band is a trio of sisters. Oh, and, okay. Uh, so, yep. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> that's my band. Here you go. <laughs> and you said you all look goofy on stage. One of the members of Ham. Hi, I'm. Uh, I don't know. Ham, um, like yeah. Ohio. It looks like ham, so I'm gonna say. It does look like ham, and I'm all like, "Yes, I'll be the bacon." But <laughs> uh, together we can be a burger. It'd be great. It'd be outstanding. But uh, one of them is notorious for making these these faces while she's playing. Well, the that's bass. me. That is all me. You guys, you guys as sisters, is do you think there's an actual, especially as twins, is there something that gives you guys a special chemistry? Can what are you all like? What, is it different for you guys? I think uh, the main different thing for us is that uh, harmonies. Like that was something that I just ended up. It's not. I've never taught to do harmonies or anything, but it was something that I just kind of picked up. And then that's when we were like, oh, we should do a music thing. That would make sense with these harmonies. I think that the work ethic as well. We understand each other more. Yeah. It doesn't mean like when we get into it, things can be a little rougher at first. Like if we disagree, then like. I think we tend to fight a little more than normal people, but we can vote really quick. Yeah, it's happening it's show time, and like we're on stage, we're like, if we give each other the look, it's like, okay, we're gonna do that thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I saw y'all exchange Yeah, of course, right. Yeah. There's yeah. a bit of an unspoken communication. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, some, one, of my, one of my best friends is a hate twin, and um, when, when they had each other's back, they were the biggest power team in the world. But boy, did they fight. <laughs> yeah. You know, over the simplest things. Yeah, I think I, the weird thing is that like we don't fight about anything. But right. if we do fight, we fight, and then like five minutes later, it's like, hello! Yeah, like, like we're you. all going that. Like, it's amazing how quickly things can turn around from, yeah. wow, oh. really oh. Nice. I love you. <laughs> oh, I love you. Yeah, and like I feel like she can read my mind for the most part. Like, like, what am I thinking right now? Yes! <laughs> it's our, it's our canned answer. So. <laughs> so it look like twins. People, people always ask us, like, do you read each other's minds? Do you feel each other's pain? No. no. We're not amazing or anything. We're, we're not, not X-Men. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 
not we're not experts. We're not Siamese. Yeah. Okay, so um, I, I was told by your manager. See how cool that was? Yeah. Uh, I was told by your manager that uh, you all started music in a little bit of a different way. Like you, it was a tool, like a literal yes. tool. Yeah. Can you tell them about this? Um, so. Or is that yeah, private? No, 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 no. Okay. So I actually I like to tell people it was technically an accident because uh, when I was born, I had some issues with my hands, with uh, the motors in my hands. So I went through occupational therapy for about three or four years. And then once I got through with that, my parents decided she needs something to move her hands, even if she's done with therapy. Well, that oh, one's always it? singing. She needs something. Here's a keyboard. Happy birthday. How crazy is that? <laughs> yeah. She learned to play the guitar because it was a physical tool, tool to help her motor skills. That's crazy. I still do. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I still do. And you were already singing. I was, well, I kind of always sang. Like, I came out screaming, so it just made sense to sing. Um, and my mom used to tell the stories that we used to read in church. Um, they would, I'd be singing along. And I wouldn't know the words, but they'd be like, ah, 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 kind of. Singing along, but louder, but, but way louder, and people would turn around and be like, "Oh, because <laughs> I was really little then, and uh, it's not always been singing." So, is, is that something that when, when did you all get together as a duo, like officially playing in venues and uh, doing shows? Well, we went through a couple of years of student academies. Uh, we did student bands through the American Academy of Music and Dance here in Austin, and then I'd say in about 2011. We started doing the duo stuff, and we did a bit of an overlap with the academy and the duo. And then, I think it's pretty much yeah, six years. Then, yeah. yeah. So how many instruments do you all play? Because I'm told by your mama Joe yeah. that uh, there's a bit of instruments on both your all sides. Let's see, there's, okay, there's yeah. piano for, for both of us. There's piano, there's voice, there's bass guitar. And then I play the guitar, she plays the drums. Oh, like the kick drums and yeah, the hand drums. We used to play the flute and clarinet, and yeah, I like your band. <laughs> that's about as all I can remember. And the words on the street, you play clarinet? Yeah, I do. Uh, All yeah. right. I just wanted to see you didn't mention that. Is there a reason? Oh, uh, well, because I haven't played it in like four years. <laughs> and I actually sent it to me. I sent it to me fix. And that was in October, and they called me yesterday. They were like, hey, you're going to come pick it up? I was like, oh my god, yes, I'm sorry. How do you guys get, like, how do you guys get high? Like, do you have, we were talking about this earlier, do you have a process, or do you just go up there and turn it on? It's, a, it's not so much of a turn it on. It's kind of a, you do the first song, and you're like, oh, that's okay. And then you get into it more, you start warming it's up. It's a little bit of a warm up process. Yeah, it can, it can take. 20 to 30 minutes to really like feel like you're actually yeah. clicking but especially like usually if you get to a venue early and like you're usually by yourself the first couple of songs maybe like one or two people in the room eventually as the mic goes on you get more and more people yeah and more comfortable yeah it's a slow, gradual process. Yes. Now I, I know a lot of musicians. You two are, are some of the younger ones that I've met at this level because, like I said, I fanboyed out on you all. Like I was like. It was, it was crazy because I know a lot of musicians who are a little bit older. They're mid-20s, 30s, 40s. Heck, I know 50-year-old mus musicians. Some of them do it because they love it. Some of them do it for the paycheck, the fame, the glory. What's your all's inspiration that gets you guys to be like, hey, let's put on this show? Or, or do certain ven venues get you up in the day more? What's your driving force, I guess? I'd say, I'd say that for, for us, it's just music. Because I don't think either of us can imagine doing anything else. No. <laughs> Like all of them. Yeah. But I mean, aside from school and stuff, obviously music is our main hobby of what we want to do. And I think working as a musician is really um, the word I'm looking for. Therapeutic? Yes, yeah. yes, because. Um, Boom, that's why yeah, I had that thank one. That's you. Word. Yeah. I can't sing, but I can find the word. Exactly. So like, How would that go? That's not the word. Yeah. That's not the word. But I'm not your twin. Right, exactly. So I can't do this with you. If only she could read my mind. I was, I was illustrating closeness. We're not X Men just yet. Yeah, we're going to We're like big C Men. We're going to the Academy. We'll meet Professor Xavier. It's fine. Um, <laughs> but uh, it's really therapeutic really really because you get to do what you love. <laughs> And you get some kind of reward out of it, whether it's performing for people or if it's a monetary reward or just certain venues have a certain charm to them that you can just really get into and click with. So it's a, see, there's many reasons and they all kind of lead up to the same thing, which is just, you have to love it if you're going to do it. Your fans are leaving. Bye. 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 Bye.
go on that, like this is a very specific example, like let's say like, early in the week we've started working on a new song, particularly like, a cover, and we do like some interesting twist on it. Like we'll come to the gig and we're like, I can't wait to get that song, I can't wait to get that song, and it's like, just watch the audience reaction to not just like, not the level of the song, but like, more like the, the twist of what we're going to do. So when they throw oh. tomatoes at us, we're like, okay. Oh, <laughs> no, no. No. I can't even imagine. Aside from that, you guys were young. You're still young, but you were young, very likable people. Even if you're like, hurk, 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 they weren't going to throw the tomatoes. We've been there. They're going to be like, oh, how cute, they're trying. You yeah, know? We got that. <laughs> so, out of my own cute. So, is there a certain way, because you all started young in the business, right. and you seem to have had, I mean, right now you're pretty young, and you have this level of success already, enough to where I'm following you, I'm singing your praises, I've told my dad about you all. Aww, my dad's you. a musician of 40 plus years, just retired, and now he only plays at church. Right. So he plays for, you know, wakes and funerals, and if they need him to sing certain songs, but he doesn't play with his band anymore. And I was like, Dad, look at these girls, they know how to harmonize, and he was like, me, well, they're doing really <laughs> and I was just like, yeah, I met him at the airport. Yeah. Like, what are we How good of the mill is that? Like, that's so, what are the odds? Well, I was telling your momager that it was actually inspiring for me because I was on my way to go perform. And, like, there's nothing like that energy of, of meeting someone new and exciting and talented and still not jaded. I by right. no means am jaded, but I know a lot of people that are. Right. And you guys are, like, singing with, with heart, but not, like, Working through it, you right, weren't just right. like, my God, hit me. You were like, <laughs> yeah, I was like and I was like, oh, you hugged me, right? Like, yeah. And that was me too. I grew up with like love and hugs and like great siblings. So then I went to Denver, and I'm all like, I'm just feeling good. Yeah, I'm just Aww. like, I'm gonna perform now. And then my material got a little crazy, but I was still in the mood, and they still liked it. But um, now that the reason I'm asking all that questions about your history. Because I know that when people have been doing it for a while, they get their first paycheck. I'm not going to ask you what that paycheck was, but did, it, but did it, what did it feel like to get the first one? I know me, I was already older than you all when I started. So by the time I got my first check, it was just this, like I'm a made man, I can't go wrong, I've been paid, everyone look out, I'm coming. How did it feel to you all? I think my exact thoughts in my head were, wait, this is a thing? Yeah, <laughs> and like, um, I'm not saying like, you know, like, it's been a while since, like, the first time, but I think, oh, it was, see, that was, no, no, no. I was no, trying was like, to be like, uh, yeah, I came out of the room screaming, and then I sang, and by one, I was making mills. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mills and um, bills. Yeah, no, it's like, I Can I use for some of that for my college education? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's just really, like I said, it's really rewarding, is that you get to do what you love, and the, we were happy enough with the reward of like just people showing up because that was always a huge problem when we were kids. Our friends couldn't drive, and no parent wants to. My friend has a performance. Can we go? And the parent's like, um, Do I really want to listen to a bunch of twelve-year-olds? Yeah, the parents like, No, we're not going. No. And so we had a lot of struggle with getting people to come out, especially when we started. Which I'm sure everyone goes through. So to have the kind of reward of either financial or performing for somebody that we knew. Um, they all felt the same. It was really rewarding. Yeah, and because we because we were so young when we started, I think the idea of all right, people respect us. Like, yeah, okay. that was rewarding to us because like we know we're young and we fully expect that we're not going to be as good as the like experienced yeah. people. So like to have that respect at all was just really yeah. It makes you feel really professional. Yeah. You're like I'm, I'm a professional musician. I know something. I'm <laughs> All right. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Who is, are there people that inspire you? Because your parents aren't musicians. They are, but they still inspire us because they support us. Yeah, and they like They're in the room. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> they're paying our tuition. <laughs> and no, sorry, we're kidding. We love them. They're super supportive. I mean, they they brought us here. They put the equipment in the car. Like they they bought all the equipment. Like we wouldn't be able to do anything. But we we were really lucky to have grown up with great teachers as well yeah. who taught us not only about music, but how to be a person in the music business. Yeah. That's great. Good teachers. Uh, that's, that's fantastic. And that, that's why, personally, I want to be a teacher because of that. Yeah, that's uh, that's interesting that you guys, I was talking earlier to your mom, and uh, she was explaining to me how you guys were taking uh, certain routes in college. Mm -hmm. And it, it doesn't surprise me, but I think it's really healthy that you're not like, I want all the fame, I want all the fortune. I think that's a really healthy way to approach things. Because if it happens, 
Yeah, it'll fine. happen. Yeah. That's fine. But you're still doing it. You still love it. You're well adjusted, it seems. Thank you know, you. I'm not like sitting here being like, I hope they don't get addicted to smack. I'm like, okay, they'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, they'll be fine. They'll be fine. They got good parents, good good brother. We have any other siblings that are good too. Yeah, uh, that's, that, that's the one. So that's the other one. Keep cool. Dog, so you're the, you're the favorite brother. You show your face to the camera, kid. Yeah. <laughs> show the face to the camera, kid. Hi. The favorite brother, who's also a musician, right? He's the only or you brother. play music? Uh, he's in choir now. Yes. Oh, nice. See, me and you can jam and you can teach me how to sing, because right now I'm, <laughs> I'm not that guy. I'm not that guy. ever need a bass. There yeah, we go. Yeah. Like, oh. So I can do that Mitch Hedberg bass thing where he just plays bass and I'm just all like sunglasses and telling stories <laughs> and jokes. That's magical. That's magical. 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 I love that man. So what what's next for you all? Like you guys are on somewhat of a hiatus? Because it's, 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 it's more like we took a hiatus for about three months when we started college and now we came back in October and we're kind of we're not doing it at the pace that we used to. Because like before we were doing at least like maybe two shows a weekend. Yeah, it would we might have been if we did that in college, like, we would have burned yeah. the candle. So now we're, we're only doing about like two or three shows a month, mostly. Like we're that's where we're averaging. And it's and it's all over the place. Too. Like we sometimes we go to San Antonio, um, sometimes we're here. So we're doing more in Houston now. Cause that's where we are. So we're it's kind of it's a little bit more spread out, and it's spread out in terms of dates as well. Okay. So I mean that's cool that you're not gonna burn out. You know, yeah. it's not it's not gonna feel like a job. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's still love there. Yeah. Right. So um, all the people out there in internet land, where can they find you? Like, how do they get a hold of your music? Which one's that? That's the CD. Uh, so, yeah, this is the Storm Within. It's about to celebrate its one year anniversary on January twenty first, and you can find this CD on AnnieandKate.com. Again, that's AnnieandKate.com. But it's also on iTunes, Amazon, Spotify. If there's another music service out there. And that's Annie as in A N N I E. As in the red hood of the first time he says, Innie. Innie, yeah. Annie at Innie. I'm Annie. I'm Annie. I'm Annie. I'm Annie. I'm Annie. I'm Annie as in the orphan from the musical, Kate as in Kate Winslet. <laughs> and happy as me because I had you guys on the show. Thank you for having us. So they can find you on your website. You guys are active on Instagram. It's right. also yes. Annie underscore and yeah. underscore Kate. Kate. Yes. Right? Look yes. at me paying attention. Yeah. I told you. I stopped them. You know what I do? <laughs> that, that's okay. And you know you guys can always find me on the Black and Tan podcast on anything, all things JJG, Jacob James Garcia. But right now I'm not important. Follow Annie and Kate. Don't worry about this guy. Follow them. No, follow him too. Fantastic musicians. They have more than one CD out. So you can have a little variety play, a buffet, if you will. Uh, in South Texas, they call it a botana. I call it a botana, but they get mad at me for that because I don't speak Spanish, so I try. I'm like, give me a botana. And they're like, you're faking it. You don't, you don't speak Spanish. That's our problem too. That's yeah. so how we were half Mexican, so yeah. we never lost. And our mom always makes fun of us for it. She's like, you're, you're not, you don't sound Spanish enough. He goes, but I got a story for you guys after we get off the air about uh, <laughs> ethnic stuff, but it was when I was, yeah. It, that, so I'm going, that's why you're in shows, right? Cut. <laughs> right? I'm not editing that out. This is unfiltered. This oh, okay. is behind the scenes. <laughs> I don't need an editor to be like, Jacob makes stupid. Yeah. Just edit this out. You just did it with me. Do it. Do it. Do it. This is how, this is how you have to end every show now. Just like, five. I'm Jacob James Garcia, and this has been real, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I just clapped for you guys. Round of applause for Annie and Kate. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, clap. All right. Until next time, this has been the JJG with Annie and Kate. You guys rock the day and rule the night. See you guys later.